Welcome to Dominant Mets Nation, where we just saw one of the worst series in quite some time. In fact, this series probably was the worst series since we played the Braves last year when we were outscored 36-3. to That happened in August. That happened after the trade deadline. So you know what? I would have to say this series is worse because we were outscored 22-1. to A playoff team outscored by over two, almost two dozen runs. Almost two dozen runs. This team, the Mariners and the Mets, came in with almost identical records. Almost identical, right? It's not like we're playing the best team in baseball. But even if we were, it's our job to compete. We did not compete. We were outworked, outclassed, outcoached. This was a pathetic. A, a, this was a pathetic performance. The New York Mets. Carlos Mendoza should be apologizing to us New York Mets fans because those guys didn't even try. Didn't even try. That was not a professional performance. That was not. 22 to 1. You know, you don't say our guys went out there and were professional. We were cons- were not professional. Not professional. Uh, uh, from Friday to Saturday to yesterday against Luis Castillo, but on Friday night we were shut out, Saturday night shut out, and yesterday we would have been shut out if not for the squirrel uh, taking a home run. I mean, it was ridiculous, ridiculous. After the trade deadline, this is the performance? We are 4-7 and since the trade deadline? You gotta be kidding me. You have to be kidding me. This feels like before we had our players only meeting in end of May, we were playing like crap. We were 22 and 33. Basically, the guys got together and said, hey, you know what? If we don't play better, we're all going to be traded. We're going to be gone. Our families are going to have to move. Our situations are going to have to be altered. If we don't want that to happen, we have to play better. Unfortunately, the trade deadline has passed. There is no, you know, and it's sad to say because they're all professionals, but really there's nothing to really push and motivate these guys. You would think the playoffs would be that motivating factor, but I guess not because ever since the, the trade deadline, we're playing bad teams, bad teams. I mean, the Mariners were, you know, on our ladder, on our level, but we have not looked well since we played uh, the Angels. Not good. You know, Twins, that game, we lost. Rockies, we lost a game against them. Um, You know, and obviously, we lost three straight games to the Mariners. I'm not saying the Mariners are bad, but we did not even put up a fight. Not even a fight. Now, we have a lot to get into, and that was a bit of a long intro, but we're going to get into it. Uh, You know, and we're going to start off the bat with Pete Alonso, our boy Pete Alonso. We're going to get to that. Um, but, But first... If you're a Met fan and you like Mets talk, if you like MLB talk, please like, please subscribe. Uh, um, you know, I, 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 you know, I, I apologize. I apologize, Mets fans. You, you get, you should be owed an apology from the Mets organization, from Carlos Mendoza, down to the playoffs players, because we did not execute. We did not perform. We didn't do anything right. We didn't do anything right. So let's get to the so-called leader, and then we'll go to some um, kind of you know key things to focus on. So Pete Alonso, ever since the trade deadline, it really seems like the focus has been on Mr. Pete Alonso, right? You know, that's that seems to have been the focus. So we had that bad series in Anaheim. After that bad series, The next game, Pete Alonso was dropped to the lineup, right? So I don't know if something transpired in the clubhouse because Pete Alonso has been, you know, bad and unclutched for a long period of time. At that time, when he would drop to fifth, he was hitting 190 with runners in scoring position. Now, you know, all of all of everyone's saying he's been one of the most dominant run producers in all of baseball, and he has, he has, he's had the home runs, he's had the RBIs to go with it. But I'll tell you what Pete Alonso has been. Pete Alonso has been unclutched. He has gotten a lot of these RBIs when the team has stunk or been out of it. Stunk or been out of it. When the team has been 
com- competitive or good, Pete Alonso has failed. This year being new, you know, the best example. We're trying to fight for a playoff spot. Pete Alonso hits 200 with runners in scoring position. He has had little impact. So we all get to see it. This year, out in the open, contract year, Pete Alonso hitting under 800 OPS, under 500 slugging. I think he's hitting around 470 slugging, which to all of you who don't know, his career slugging is around 550. And hitting 470 slug for a guy like Pete is horrible. Horrible. Um, so Pete is hitting well below this year. Last year, the team was out of it, right? So the team we all know had one of the worst years. But but let me go back to this year. This year, just so we all know, Pete is number two in all of baseball in runners left on base. Pete Alonso has left 221 runners on base this year. The only guy, the only guy in all of baseball that has left more runners on base, then Mr. Pete Alonso is Teoscar Hernandez, and he's left 227 runners on base. Pretty soon, Pete Alonso will catch up. He's only six behind, but he is number two in all of baseball. So that's what he's leading the uh, baseball in. Last year, the Mets were um, the Mets were out of it, right? So the pressure was off. So last year, Pete Alonso was still number 14 in all the baseball. He was left 277 men on base. Last year, that's still very, very high. He's still in the top 15. In all of baseball, he, let, he was number 14. But in 2022, when we were fighting for, you know, to go deep in the playoffs, when we had a great team, when we had 101 wins, Pete Alonso was number two in all of baseball and left 290 men on base. Oh, number two in baseball. If you go back to 2021, uh, and the stat we're talking about is runners left on base, Pete Alonso was number five in 2021. In 2020, Pete Alonso was number seven in 2019. Even if we go back to his rookie year, Pete Alonso was number 14. So since 2019, Pete Alonso has been in the top 14 in all of baseball, in terms of leaving runners on base, now the better our team has been, the higher he has been on this list. So in 2024, our team is good. He is number two. In 2022, our team was good. He was number two. Now, when the pressure was off, he is still leaves a lot of runners on base, but he is a bit lower on the rankings. Now, this is telling you a lot. First of all, it's telling you he has a heck of a lot of opportunities. Thus, why he always ends up with a decent amount of RBIs. But this guy is failing more often than not and fails more often than not when the pressure is on. Now, there's a lot of questions about Peter Alonzo, and we were hoping that they would be answered. Now, number one, is he a winner? Haven't seen that. Number two, is he a leader? Well, you know, the team's gone south last year. It was a dumpster fire. 2002, we fizzled out in a round one of the playoffs. This year, we have a great opportunity, added some, you know, decent pieces, and since the trade deadline, sunk. When he had an opportunity after the, um, the Angels series to say, hey, guys, get on my back. It's about the team. He made it all about himself. And the team has thus far sunk. You know, taking a a downhill turn. That's what the opposite of leadership looks like. When the team is doing bad, you make things worse. You know, leadership is supposed to be a calming presence. A calming presence. Somebody who takes the burden, the stress, puts them all on himself so the team can relax. But no, no, I'm an all-star. No, no, I'm hitting 40 on runs. I'm not going to take anything negative out of this. No, I'm doing my job. It must be everybody else. No, that is the opposite of a leader. Is he clutch? Hasn't answered that question. Um, you know, and, and you know, you, I, and I'm not like a fitness guru, but the guy doesn't seem like he's the most physically fit. Is this guy going to age well over six, seven, eight years? I mean, you look at like a fitness competition. 
The Home Run Derby is a fitness competition. He has gotten worse and worse, and that's the only fitness competition we have seen. It's not like basketball. We get to see the guys running back and forth. You can see who's out of breath, this and that. The only fitness event we have seen is Pete Falter in the Home Run Derby. Thus, I see that his conditioning is off. You saw when they ripped his shirt off, I think it was last year, the guy was choky. The guy was choky. Now the guy wants to be paid $300 million. And that's another thing. You go to all these, you, know, you research about Pete Alonso, and you see that Scott Boris is running cover for him. Whether it's Sports Illustrated, whether it's fan sided, you see all these articles that Pete Alonso is linked to four teams um, that are interested with him. It, it's, it's, it's unreal. It's unreal. It's like, you know, um, Scott Boris said, don't worry, Pete. We'll make sure we, we write good stuff. And I guess, you know, Scott Boris has to protect his asset. He has got to protect Pete because Pete is doing a horrible job not performing. He's doing a horrible job at when he has an opportunity to lead, not leading. And this is, this is the result, folks. This is the result. I mean, I don't know how the clubhouse has been in the last week and a half, but I would guess not good. I would guess not good. This team was lifeless out there. Lifeless in Seattle. And you know what about Seattle? So Bryce Miller was the pitcher pitching on uh, on Friday. Not, you know, not Cy Young, not Greg Maddox, not Randy Johnson, not P Pedro M uh, Martinez. It was Bryce Miller, right? So Bryce Miller, we made him look like all the, those star pitchers. He didn't give up anything against us. He was dominant. And this is a man, he has seven pitches. You know, he's, he's a nice pitcher. That's what he is. These are the pitchers you're going to see. He's more a three or a four on a playoff team. And, you know, his advanced statistics are just okay. I mean, if you look at his other outings against other teams, um, you know, you know, for example, in his last game before us, the Phillies, four innings pitched, six hits, four earned runs in four innings. The, the game before that, six innings pitched, uh, seven hits, three earned runs. He's a very hittable guy. If you have a plan, he's got seven pitches. Like I meant, like I mentioned, uh, predominantly he throws a four seam fastball and a sinker most of the time. He mixes in a split uh fastball, a split finger, and a sweeper. But those are his two predominant pitches. If you have a plan against him, you could strike. The next guy on, on Saturday night was Logan Gilbert. Logan Gilbert, in my opinion, is a little better. But like I said, if you put a plan against, you know, together against this guy, you can be successful. Logan Gilbert, you know, in, in the in the performance before the the Mets, before the Mets made him look like Jacob deGrom, he did horrible. He did horrible. Um, in fact, let me get you the exact exact box score, but before that, so the Mets, against the Mets, Logan Gilbert pitched seven innings, three hits, zero earned runs, had, I mean, he threw 92 pitches. In the game before that, now let's, let's look at the, Logan Gilbert's last couple of games against the Phillies. He pitched in six innings, um, four hits, one earned run. Okay, so that, that, that wasn't that bad. The game before that, he pitched against Boston, two innings, seven hits, seven earned runs. So this is a guy that if you get to, you can hit him. But you have to come up with a good plan, a good strategy. You need leadership. Luis Castillo, you know, they got good arms. They got good arms. Well, we showed nothing. We showed absolutely nothing out there. Now, you know, I know my guy Francisco Alvarez that I have a lot of confidence in and that we play so much better when he's kind of healthy and he's able to perform. He's not the healthiest. But, you know, that's where we got to lean on guys like Lindor and Pete Alonso. Pete Alonso has done nothing to carry this team. Nothing. Zip. Zippo. So, I mean, th that's what I got to say. This is one of – this is the worst series that I can remember in the last year. I, I rate it worse than the Atlanta series last year when we got blown out 36 to 3 because that was after the trade deadline. That was after we gave up on the season. This is when we are in the playoff hunt. 
when we have all the opportunity in front of us, Atlanta is faltering, the Phillies are faltering, we have everything right in front of us, we're still, despite four and seven, horrible road trip, or four, um, four and six, horrible road trip, we are still a half game out of the wild card, and we are still in it. But playing like this is going to crater us out of the play of contention. The team that was playing with fire and desire before the trade line, all of a sudden lost everything, lost all the inspiration. It is just unfathomable. I don't know what is going on. I don't know what is going on behind closed doors. I don't know if, you know, if Pete Alonso, if the controversy is driving everything behind closed doors. I know last year we had a lot of turmoil behind closed doors. You know, I know a month and a half ago when the Mets were playing the Texas Rangers, I didn't lose note, uh, lose fact of the site when the Mets were beating up on the Rangers and the Rangers brought in a position player to pitch. Pete Alonso was hitting against that position player and took four consecutive pitches. That was kind of slightly out of the zone, but the guy was lobbing it. Max Scherzer yelled in frustrating, come on, what the F, swing. And seeing that re uh, reaction that Scherzer gave Pete kind of like led me to believe like, you know, they didn't have the best relationship. And why would he be so angry at the guy? It seemed like there was something deeper there. We all know the Tommy Pham complaints. Tommy Pham complaining about how our guys aren't working hard and about how there was a troublesome nature in the clubhouse. You know, where there's smoke, folks, there's fire. And this team, I got to say, is the core is going to be blown up. The core is going to be blown up. I mean, Pete Alonso I, I got, is so far off this team right now, it's not even funny. He's already turned down a seven-year, $156 million contract. But all those folks who are saying, well, you're going to miss him. He's power. He's this. He's that. And then, like, you should sign him to a five-year, 150 or six-year. They're all saying that we should sign him to money. He already turned down. He already turned down a more than fair, a more than reasonable contract. So before we say, oh, we're going to miss him, remember, you. this guy wants to make 30 plus million dollars and the only thing he brings is occasional power when we don't need it on clutch situations when we're out of it so i don't need that occasional power i can supplement his stats in other ways and that's what david stearns were doing i mean essentially right now you have a number four hitter that is ultra unproductive i remember i believe it was ronnie the other day uh, he, uh, I believe it was Ronnie, he said that the RBIs, the most RBIs have come from the number one position in the lineup and the number eight position in the lineup. That's, those two, those are the two top run producing positions, not number three, not number four, not number five. I mean, that is just so, you know, like untraditional and it just goes to show you how much of a failure Pete Alonso has, has been. Now, another thing that I, I saw, and I was watching the MLB Network, and they were speaking to, I forgot what is his name. He does like a lot of these, you know, first take type of shows. Um, and he was talking about Pete Alonzo. And everybody was saying, oh, Pete Alonzo's not cutting it. And I don't think the Mets should sign him. And he's like, what are you talking about? Pete's the best. He's a home run hitter. Are you crazy? And they're comparing him to Christian Walker. And then this guy's like, oh, he's so much better than Christian Walker. And then they go to Ronnie. And then they go, uh, Ronnie, um, you would take Pete Alonzo over Christian Walker. You would sign him over Christian Walker, right? Something along those lines. And then Pete, uh, Ronnie, who knows Pete the most, knows Christian Walker, knows baseball, goes, without, without saying Pete stinks, without uh, saying anything, he goes, Christian Walker is a hell of a ball player. And that's all I needed to know. Ronnie was basically saying, you don't know what you're talking about. I watch this guy every single day. I would take Christian Walker on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Sunday, any day of the week. <laughs> Especially for the price that Pete Alonzo is asking for. And I, I got to say, you know, Pete Alonzo, I don't know what it is, but one of the worst decisions you have made thus far and it may, it may and you know we don't know what's gonna happen in the future but s signing on with scott boris has tanked your numbers 
has really turned kind of a lot of fan, you know fans against you because it's made you look selfish when you've opened your mouth you've only supported that claim and you know you were one of the most beloved players in all of baseball and you were here in New York you could have signed here for the next seven years. You could have been that cornerstone piece, but you want to make bank. And that's understandable. Un that's understandable. But the way in which we are going about it, if you would have had that Aaron Judge-like year, you would have had all the fan support in the world. You would have had everybody banging down Steve Cohen's door. But at the end of the day, you're not producing. And there's so many games where we need to eke out runs. You know, I think about, you know, in the playoffs in 2015, um, and when we had Daniel Murphy and even Yoan Assessment is at, at occasion, but mostly Daniel Murphy hitting all those, you know, big home runs to keep us in games and to, you know, get us the lead against the Dodgers. And, and I think about that. I'm like, we need Pete when these games are close, when we are getting shut out, we need that big home run. We need that big hit. And Pete has uh, failed hundreds probably thousands of, of time thus far that I, I said i said pete averages about 280 290 guys that he leaves on base every single year he has been in the top 14 top 14 and and a lot of times top 10 since he's been in this league even in uh, 2020 i believe he was in the top six top seven and runners left on base so this is a man who notoriously leaves small nations on base. So of course he's going to have those high opportunities and high numbers because he's failing more often than not. And you know, you know, you got to succeed some of the time. But it's just, it's just very sad. And you know, I, I feel bad. And we don't deserve this type of play. But it, it is what it is right now. All right, folks. We we're gonna we're gonna cover this. I mean, I you know I was thinking about this too. I'm like, oh, the the lower we go and the more out of it we become. Watch, watch, you'll see. Peter Alonso, he'll start hitting home runs. He'll start being dominant. Once we get out of contention or once we distance ourselves, you'll see. Peter Alonso will go back to the 2019 form, the 2022 form. You'll see that dominant All Star type of player. But right now, when we're in it, when we're in contention, when we're right there. You're going to see the crap, one of the crappiest players in all of baseball. And one last key statistic. For all you who ha hear this, please drop it down in the comments because this is probably one of the keyest statistics about Pete Alonso. You know how most of the at-bats that Major Leaguers guess, gets are against right-handed pitchers. Last year at home at City Field, Pete Alonso hit 180 against right-handed handed pitchers last year that is horrendous horrendous because you know we we know a majority of at bats come against righties and last year at city field he hit 180 horrible when you take a deeper dive into all the advanced stats you get more and more scared about signing a mr pete alonzo well that's it for today folks Thank you again. Like and subscribe. I will talk to you very, very soon. All right.